guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's going to be way shorter because we're only watching two movies. Batman 8, uh, 1989, and then Batman Returns, the Michael Keaton Batman films. Because I've only seen Batman 1989 and, um, uh, like, I was, like, not focusing on the movie. It was just sort of a background movie. Uh, and then I haven't seen Batman Returns at all. And, uh, so this is gonna be more of an in-depth review for both of them, so it'll be, like, longer segments. But if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, it would really help out. Like the video, comment down below, uh, which one of your, uh, uh, which, which of the Batman films is your favorite, like, out of every single Batman film. But, overall, um, uh, I'm excited to watch these two. Because uh, a lot of people have, like, uh, Michael Keaton's Batman as their favorite Batman. So, I'm excited to see how it is. Okay, guys, so I'm about to watch Batman, or uh, commonly referred to Batman 1989. Because, like, Batman's such a normal title. But I've seen this movie, and I thought it was actually really good. It held up. It had some great things. Michael Keaton as Batman is, uh, pretty good, and then, um, shoot, I can't think right now. Jack Nicholson as, uh, the Joker is amazing, like, that's one of the best Jokers. And so I'm excited to rewatch this, like, and focus on the movie, and see how, like, the story is and everything. And so, yeah, I am pretty excited to watch this movie, um... There's some things that I remember not to be the best, but I don't know. Uh, it seems uh, interesting. And also, uh, I'm not watching like Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Um, yeah, they, they like, I don't know if, I don't know much Batman lore. They're, they might be the same universe, just different cast, but I don't know. It'll feel different without Michael Keaton. So that's why I'm only watching these two movies. But let's watch Batman 1989. Okay guys, so I just finished Batman 1989, and since uh, I'm doing more of an in-depth review, I thought I'd sit down real quick, um, but, okay, so Batman uh, 1989. Uh, now this movie was interesting to me. Um, there are definitely some parts that I really liked. The acting was surprisingly held up. Jack Nicholson was really good as the Joker. Um, there were some, uh, yeah, Michael Keaton as Batman. He was a really good Bruce Wayne. I don't know, Batman to me feels like sort of a, like Bruce Wayne, I love the character of, like, for any actor to play Bruce Wayne, but with Batman, I don't know, it just doesn't seem, his character seems to, like, hollow. There's no death to the character, and since they are sort of two separate characters, you know, I don't know, it's it's a little weird, um, but I like some other uh, aspects of it. There were some effects that held up, um, they're, they're not really effects, uh, they're, I'm pretty sure when, like, you have the Batmobile and it, like, has metal things going around it, that they're using stop motion to do that, because it looked a little choppy, but it still was, like, it held up and it looked pretty good, and there were just a lot of different things that I loved about this. Like, if I'm looking at the cast here, of course you got... Jack Nicholson, then Michael Keaton, um, and you got some, like, the love interest, of course, um, for, uh, Bruce Wayne, and then you got, like, everyone doesn't believe in the Batman, you got the basic, like, uh, plot line of, of, like, uh, Bruce's parents being killed, it's, like, iconic, pretty much, and then you got some, um, other things, uh, you find out that Joker was, uh, one of the people to kill, uh, Bruce's parents, uh, there's many other things, but, uh, overall, I'd say it was, I would say I'd probably give it, like, a seven and a half out of ten, which is super good. There were some really good aspects, the length I feel like is perfect for the movie, maybe a little bit long for it, um, there's some different aspects. I love the different scenes with, like, Joker playing some, like, music while he's, like, um, still in the art or doing some other stuff. Um, Jack Nicholson is really the standout for, um, like, as a character. Um, <laughs> and there's some 
other aspects in here. The suit, he cannot, like, turn his neck, so he just, like, keeps moving, but you can't move your neck. It, it, it was really, um, interesting, but, you know, uh, as a movie that came out in, like, very late 80s, early 90s, it still, uh, holds up, and it's still a very good movie, and also, I did not plan this, but today is Batman Day, which, which I totally, I actually, like, I knew, like, yesterday and the day before, people were like, Batman Day is coming up, but I, I had this planned pretty early on t for this to release soon, so, while I'm filming this, is Batman Day, so that's pretty cool, but, you know, I thought this movie, yeah, overall, like, seven, Seven, seven and a half out of uh, ten. But yeah, next up, we have Batman Returns. Okay, guys, so I've watched Batman Returns, and I've never seen this movie. A lot of people like it. Uh, a lot of people love Danny DeVito as the Penguin. A lot of people like Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. And I've never seen uh, this movie, and so I don't know how it is, and I don't know the plot or anything. I'm pretty excited. Batman 8, 1989 was pretty uh, enjoyable and it held up. So I'm pretty excited to watch Batman Returns. Okay guys, so I just finished Batman Returns. And again, let's sit down for this uh, one. Now, this movie, um, I definitely thought was not as good as Batman 1989. Um, it was definitely good. It had some great aspects. Penguin was a very interesting character, to say the least. Um, you could not tell it was Danny DeVito. You just thought it was, like, a good actor who could do many things. Um, yeah, you could definitely not tell it was Danny DeVito. And since you can't tell, I always, like, think if it's, if it's, like, if I barely think of that, then it might not be, though. But it's definitely Danny DeVito. We also got some other uh, like actors in there, like Christopher Walken. I noticed him. Um, and then, yeah, um, Michelle Pfeiffer, I didn't really like as Catwoman. She definitely looked the part, especially with the suit. But I don't, I don't know, her voice didn't fit it, and she's still a good uh, actress. We got Michael Keaton back as the Batman, and then uh, whoever, I don't know who played um, Alfred. And... It was, it was definitely, um, the movie itself, um, it had some more entertaining aspects, it had a weirder plot of the Penguin, and I felt like it had, like, too many villains. It had Christopher Walk Walken's villain, and that villain hated, uh, Catwoman, and Catwoman hated the other villain, who was Penguin, and so, it was sort of, like, three villains, that's, that, that's a little much, and that they all hate each other, it, it, it's just really r weird, and then you got Batman and Catwoman having a romantic relationship with each other, uh, that, 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 that does not, like, that doesn't seem right, I, I don't know, maybe in the comics, but definitely not for on screen, like, it didn't feel right, um, you have some other aspects in there, like, um, everybody, like, loves, uh, Penguin for some reason. He becomes mayor. I honestly could not really grasp the plot, like, fully, you know? Um, it, it, was, it was just, it was a very weird movie that I was not expecting. Um, I don't know, the plot, like, is just so weird. And then, uh, it takes place all during Christmas. There's just so many different things that they really try to pack into the movie. But, like, you can only fit so much into a movie like this. I feel like there's some definite things, uh, that they should cut out. Um, back to the pain one. I liked his sort of umbrella thing. That was pretty interesting. Um, the effects, I feel like, were better in Batman 1989 than in this movie, though there weren't, like, many effects. You definitely tell, since the other one, that there was definitely a higher budget. Like, they started doing more stunts and everything, I've noticed. And I, uh, like, I knew the sets seemed, uh, bigger and they could go to more locations, which is pretty interesting. 
overall, I'd probably give this a five uh, out of ten. On a good day, five point five out of ten. But uh, I, I don't, I don't see the appeal to this movie. If I want to watch Michael Keaton's Batman, I'll probably watch Batman nineteen eighty nine, and um, they tried setting up another Michael Keaton Batman movie, like, with Catwoman and everything, and I don't know what's in, uh, Batman Forever and Batman Around and all those movies. It's just not the same actor, so I don't think they're connected at all, but I don't know that for sure. But yeah, that was the end of these two movies. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. Um, yeah, the Batman films from the late 80s, early 90s, pretty interesting. Michael Keaton is a really good fit as the Batman, and you would think it would end there, and, like, that this whole sort of, uh, Michael Keaton Batman was over. But recently, with the announcement of, like, the Flashpoint movie, or Flash movie, Michael Keaton's Batman is turning so there's gonna be three on stream batmans like at a similar time because you got ben affleck from like um the dceu who we thought was over by jess is returning uh then we got the new one with robert pattinson who i'm actually pretty excited for and we're gonna get michael keaton back in the role and so yeah it's the future of batman's pretty interesting and hope you had a good uh national Batman Day or International, I really don't know. Uh, I definitely had a good, uh, Batman Day. I liked these, uh, it was, like, enjoyable to watch these movies. And, yeah, if you haven't already, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. But check out my merch, uh, link will be in the description, and check out my Patreon, links in the description. But that's all for this episode of Chase CH. See you guys in the next one.